Hello, everybody. This is Ed K. Smith, the co-host of The Asset Show, here with the host of the show, Mr. Rob K. Rob, how are you, mate? Good, mate. Excellent to see. Uh, excellent to see you. And excellent to see the young man in the screen along with us, Mr. George K., who happens to be, by pure coincidence, my father-in-law. Yes. Um, so, so welcome, George. Hello, um, Ed. Hey, Rob. Nice to meet you. You know, your name's George K. Nice to meet you too. My name's yeah. Rob K. But we've yeah, got different it's, spell, it's spelled spell names, differently. Spelled differently. Yeah, yeah. So, so there's there's three people on this show with the with, with the with the sounding name K in in their as their surname. Um, I know where I got mine from because when uh, Lois, my wife, George's daughter, when we got married, didn't want to be a Smith. She didn't want to be a smith, and I didn't want to be a smith either. I thought that that is the punishment crueler than death. So I said, uh, you don't want to be the most common uh, surname in, in the English language. So why don't we hyphenate it and become trendy? And there's there's no one else in the world, to my knowledge, that has that surname. No, you branded <clears throat> something. Yeah, and Rob, Rob's rob got a, a, a unique surname as well. So. This is a good yeah. We're all very special. So, so we've got George on the show today. Uh, George has been investing in shares or stocks, depending on where you're watching this in the world, uh, for since the mid '90s, and and successful in in that area. But he's also been an educator and trainer uh, in the share market, um, and running courses for individuals, also for small groups, uh, for share investing clubs. So. As we're the asset show, and we cover lots of things uh, such as domain names, which is a sort of core thing that we talk about and like to talk about, as well as cryptocurrencies, NFTs, blockchain, that we've got to spread out our asset conversations to other more traditional forms of investing, mm -hmm. such as the share market, uh, and at some point, probably real estate and things like that, because we, we're trying to be as round as possible and cross-pollinate people who are... Uh, maybe know a lot about crypto, but don't know a lot about shares and vice versa and all of the yeah. others and mix yeah. them up. So I thought, who better to get on and do a introduction into the, the world of investing into shares other than George? So, so here we are. So George, the first question I have for you, uh, what are shares or stocks? Seems like a, a really simple question, but what are they? It seems often it's a bit of a, a taboo, not taboo, but a bit of a dark arts topic. Well, I like to think that shares are owned by shareholders. If you want to own a part of a company, you can get shares in that company. They might divide it into 100 shares, and you can buy 20 shares or five shares, so on. And you participate in everything in the country. That's going to lead me to something very interesting in a moment, because... Okay. Companies make profits. Okay, well, so most do. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully the ones <laughs> okay. here. Yeah. Companies make profits and they share those profits to the shareholders. Right. Do companies pay tax? Yes. Do usually. Companies, you can answer that one if you like. Do companies pay tax? Well, some <laughs> don't, but anyway. But a lot of the companies in yeah. Australia do. The banks in Australia pay huge amounts of tax. I think it's like $5 billion worth of tax. Collectively, they pay tax. Now, do wow. the shareholders share in that tax that's paid? Yes, they share in everything. If the company goes bust, they share in that. They lose their money. If the company makes a lot of money, they share in that. If the company pays tax, it shares in that. So you will get, with many companies in Australia, I'm off on my high horse here, is you will share in the tax that's paid, right? Yeah, okay. I'll explain that to you in, in as good detail as possible I can, because the last election prior to the one we've just had with Bill Shorten, he lost an election on that topic. Okay. Mm. Right. Yeah. Because the, the topic was tax franking credit. Have you heard, heard of franking credits? No. Well, that's going to be interesting for all your listeners today. <laughs> okay. Right. We'll, get, so we'll I want, get into that. I want to share it. I want to have a company that's paid tax. And I want to share in the tax being paid so that I don't have to pay as much tax as I do on my own income. That'd be a good thing, wouldn't okay. it? Okay. Yeah, Thanks. yeah. And that's a good reminder, uh, just before we go any further to everybody 
watching or listening. Oh, this, uh, yes. Yes, this is, this, is, <laughs> this is a disclaimer to say this is not financial advice. This is for educational purposes only. Uh, so do your own research, speak to a professional investor, tax yeah. consultant, financial advisor, et cetera. But this is all just our own opinions. Uh, do not necessarily go and act on any of this without doing your own research. Okay, so that out the way. Continue, continue, George. So, and that's so very interesting. Thank you for saying that. First of all, of course, thanks for inviting me on the show. I watched some of the episodes. That they're very good. I'm glad to be a part of Thank it. you. Um, Thank you, George. It, shares that are very, very highly regulated area yeah. of investment. You can, you can go to a barbecue and you can say to somebody, hey, you should buy that property down the road. It's really, really good. And that's okay. But if you say, I think you should buy some Telstra shares, you could figuratively speak and go to jail for that. It's highly, highly regulated. You can't recommend yes. shares to anyone. And especially if they buy them and they lose the money, they can sue you. Yeah. Yes. So, and there's a lot of insider trading that goes on and, and there's people at ASIC and at APRA who are watching this thing all the time. So, it's, so that's one of the things I like to say to people is it's good from that point of view that the share market is highly regulated. Yes. And, uh, and, and, it, and it's still... it's. I'm just saying it still it still doesn't stop people from losing their money either. So uh, <laughs> the, the the regulation uh, keeps things in check in terms yeah. of just don't have every Joe Blow recommending stuff, which is what it's like in the crypto world. Let's be very very clear. Um, it's it's rampant in the crypto world because there's such a huge yeah. amount of lack of regulation. So, so in the, um, the courses I used to run to for tape, I used to have to have a same disclaimer. I would say. Oh, any shops, stuff to talk about, shares, uh, you know, I'm not recommending them. The only thing yeah. I will do today, I will highly recommend, in fact, demand practically two things that uh, participating in shares do, okay? Mm -hmm. Do you want them now? Yes, go. <laughs> okay. The first thing you should do with any investment is diversify, okay? Yeah, that works Anything for crypto like too. I gosh, can... gosh. <laughs> now, you're doing crypto, you might diversify from Bitcoin to Ethereum or whatever, whatever. but that's not, that's not the only diverse, diversification you need. You need to diversify into other assets like shares, property, yep. superannuation. Now, what about other countries? You should diversify into America. So that diversification is very interesting. It happened the other day, I read an article or I'm watching the news and it, inevitably somebody comes on and they say, They've lost a lot of money from an investment. And I say to my wife, Val, I say, wait a minute, here it's coming, it's coming in a moment. And right enough, the guy says, I've lost all my money. Why does he not say, nice. I've only lost 20% of money because I, I had diversified my other 80% into something else. They never yeah. say that. People go, oh, the whole money in one thing. No, diversify. Don't diversify too much. I mean, don't buy 100 shares. In different companies to diversify, it's, you go mad, you know. But do diversify. Yeah, yeah that's My a very sex. good point, George. Because I hear that Can all I the time, I wish and it drives, had it drives me nuts. And told us all that about four months ago. What are you saying, Rob? <laughs> I'm, I'm semi kidding, but semi not. <laughs> yeah, look, it is a it is a common problem that we do get a lot of people, and we read this on Twitter and other things yeah. that people say that. They've lost their shirt because they they put all their money and look we're constantly saying it only invest what you can absolutely afford to lose it's not you know it's not yeah. going to stop you from living or, yeah. or or putting food on the table or paying your mortgage it's just like don't be stupid but people get greedy uh, and and then things like that so yeah and yeah. when we talk about crypto going forward i'm going to point to this show and say also you should watch our show with george and you should diversify yeah. Thank you. Yes. The second thing I'll so point to if you know when people used to come to my courses, they used to say, How do I get started in shares? I'll say, Well, the easiest way is to go to your bank, online bank, and your bank will have a platform that you can buy shares on. Now, this isn't wasn't the case in the 90s, of course, when my wife Val no. started in shares because our daughter Lois, Ed's wife was working at the ASX in Perth. And she said, there are some free lectures on a Tuesday 
called Stocks to Watch, and that tells you everything. Stocks to Watch. And people, it would be like 50 or 100 people in the room who all wanted to know the latest thing to buy so they could get it. When it went up, they could sell it. And that was what everyone thought share, you know, investing in shares was buying, selling, buying, selling. And that, of course, is not the case. I'll, I'll uh, explain that to you later. Well, of course, that, um, so we used to say, go to your bank. They all have a platform. NAB has a thing called NABTRADE. Uh, ANZ have uh, E-Trade, it used to be called. But the best one by far, and I don't, I highly recommend this now because it's won so many awards, is Comsec. Okay? The one yeah. run by Commonwealth Bank is the easiest. I was in the hospital a little while ago for a short while, and I got chatting to a nurse, a young nurse who was about 25, and she said, what do you do? I said, I used to teach share market. And she says, I want to get some shares. I said, look, uh, go tonight, go onto, onto Comsec, and you should find a lot on there. She came in the next morning, and she says, I bought some shares last night. You know, yeah. 20 minutes, yep. and, and it's gone up by, you know, one dollar or something, and she was excited. And it's so easy. Comsec, they call it the old people site. Comsec, <laughs> has, Comsec has a million people on their trading platform, a million in Australia. Wow, yeah. Seventy percent of them never buy shares or sell shares in a whole year. Right. We'll come to that later. And then the lot, and the average age is about fifty to sixty or seventy or eighty or ninety. So George, 85. Yeah, would you say, George, that most people using Comsec have been using it since like the 90s and treat it more as superannuation? Yes, they have. But uh, Comsec didn't really get going until, you know, the, the, yeah, the late 90s, perhaps, when people got online, when people started to become, when the um, banking went online, when the local bank closed down, you know, everybody had to go <laughs> online and do banking, didn't they? Well, Comsec started to flourish then. I mean, my wife bought her first shares in the early 90s. She phoned the broker. She had to have, you have, to have a broker. Um, they sent her a contact note by, by mail, and my wife posted them a check. Yeah. So she yeah. Said, what does it think? You know? No, you know? the things, things have changed. I mean, I mean yeah. that's the thing that people have to remember is now that, I mean, yeah. shares are technically, I mean, we talk about digital oh, assets. That is digital assets, yeah. Yes. Yeah, it, it really is a digital asset. It probably no, wouldn't have been classified years ago as a digital asset because no, of what you had to go through. That's interesting. You know, for the last last year, for the first time it happened, my wife didn't have to submit a tax return yeah, because okay. all the data was pre-filled by the government on her site. All her dividends, all the, the yep. taxes that she was due to pay, all the income that she received from anybody, the interest from bank accounts, all the dividends from shares was automatically pre-filled and it automatically, she got a cash refund. I'll explain the cash refund thing in a moment. Well, when I get time. So that has changed entirely, hasn't it now? So she's online doing yes. all the, the, the chairs and sometimes she does buy some chairs. Sometimes, sometimes people do. And then at the end of the year, it's automatically all done for you. I know you have a very good site called... Uh, um, cool something. What was it? The one that did all your mark uh, tax accounting for crypto. Oh, CryptoTaxes.com.au. Yeah, yeah. yeah CryptoTaxes.com.au, yeah. which yeah. we're in partnership that with, good. with, That's an with Coinly. Idea. Yeah, yeah, that was very good. Well, of course, if you have shares, you don't have to do that necessarily. Okay. Next question. Uh, okay, Rob. Question. So yes, people have you know, should cut shares in their superannuation, or they do a self-funded retirees, have a lot of shares from the 90s, 2000s, they've started to get lots of shares in their book. They've learned how to buy shares that are going to give, wait for it, give a secure and growing income. Uh -huh. Now, one thing I'll have to say, and I'll have to borrow this quote from a, a really good speaker, income, is better than wages. Yeah, James Rome. Wages, Rome. you got to go out. There's no <clears> guy, but trading is like work. You've got to buy the share, watch it, sell it. That's yeah. work, right? And yeah. going out to work is it. But income is something that's passive. It's going to come to you whether you are there or not. 
So for instance, say you've got shares in Bunnings. You yep. know how Bunnings works. You don't have shares in Bunnings, of course, you have shares in West Farmers. Yeah, so West yeah. Farmers is a company that owns Bunnings. So you yeah. can have shares in yeah. that company. You know, you, you don't have to go to Bunnings and help them out with stacking the shelves, you know. That's all done for you. And you share the profits that that company makes, send you a dividend twice a year. They send you a dividend about March and about in September. So most companies do that. In Australia, most companies, they pay a dividend twice a year, around March, around September. They're all over the place. Come off Bank is entirely different. And those dividends will come to you with the income that you, you're, 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 you're to share in, and you can that goes directly to your bank account, doesn't it? Yes, you, uh, don't, get, yes. you don't get a check in the mail anymore. That no, goes no. direct to your bank account. So let's go back to like the early 2000s with Comsec. I'm trying to draw parallels for me because I'm not that interested in shares, um, yeah. but I, I'm very interested in cryptocurrency. Yeah. But I can tell that it's the, the way the cryptocurrency markets work, obviously 100% um, borrowed the way they trade from the traditional stock market. Um, so say in the early 2000s, you wanted to buy shares before crypto, um, what would you... What would you look for um, in terms of a good investment to, to hold for five or 10 years? And then that's first the first question. And then once you've, you've chosen something, how do you choose something to go into? And once you've chosen it, how do you watch it for five or 10 uh, years? Yeah, yeah. And like maybe technical analysis kind of stuff, but yes. basic technical analysis. And when, when do you, if ever, think I better pull out or I better put more in along the way? Good questions. Let me just, the first one that you, one of the interesting ones is, when do you pull out? What you can do, do you have stop loss orders on your crypto? You're supposed to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. yeah. Well, of course. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, they have, they've, saved my, they've saved my bacon many a time, I've got to say, but um, my, a lot of people in crypto don't like them because they think you just, you know, you just well, go hell for leather things. and whatever happens. Yeah. There are some things in shares that you can use to, to get out of them. For instance, uh, shares, uh, there's about five or 600 shares on the same stock exchange, probably worth investing in. But there are some called the top 100 by size. Okay, mm -hmm. the top 100. Now, this is not a recommendation, but it's an idea. If you buy a share in the top 100, you don't have to watch it because one day, if it goes to 101, it's not going to be in the table. Guess what? Yeah. You can sell it. Yeah. There's a simple rule that people often use. They say, I'll only buy shares in the top 100 or top 20 companies. And if it goes out of that list, then it can't be. It's not any good anymore. It's not as good as the others. Maybe I should yes. be selling the share and buy one of the ones that's remaining in the group. That's a very simple stop loss order. Now, if you're trading shares, I actually taught trading. I'm, I'm, I'm qualified to teach trading. Um, you should always use, oh, you work for CMC Markets for a while, for a half a year. They're a very big company on, in CFDs. And you almost, almost automatically put a stop in. I have traded the index. I've traded currencies. I, like, I used to trade the Australian US dollar. That was good to trade it because at 9.30 at night is when the market opened for American markets. That's where you could start live. And you said, your wife goes to bed and you can stay up and trade, you know. That's quite yeah, interesting. Yeah. But I always <laughs> traded with a stop loss. Always. Oh, okay. That's smart. People can learn that in, in cryptocurrency trading. Yes. The thing about cryptocurrency trading is it's 24-7. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, the, uh, yeah. the merry-go-round doesn't stop. Do, no, do you have a, you have the option to use a stop loss in your platforms? Do you? Well, you do if you're using um what we call a centralized exchange. So yes. people know of um you're talking about Comsec. The equivalent of that in cryptocurrency is like Binance.com and right. Coinbase.com. If you place all you originally place your Australian dollars in into those platform well, platforms or exchanges, and then you can buy any of the 
15,000 plus cryptocurrencies. Yeah. We shouldn't even call them cryptocurrencies, to be honest. They're, they're, a lot of them are tokens. blockchain tokens, but we oh, yeah, yeah. call them cryptocurrencies. Yeah. Um, and then once you've bought, you can, if you're using one of those exchanges, centralized exchanges, you can definitely put stop losses on there. But uh, as we're finding crypto, I mean, there's a saying going around that one week in crypto is equivalent of one year on the stock market. It's yes, okay. quite Magic. fast. Magic. So if you're putting a, if you're just going into something and you're putting a stop loss on, a lot of us have found that you just you're just losing within 10 second, or yeah, 20 yeah. percent within a day. Yeah, um, yeah, it's very volatile. It is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the, we can do yeah, stop the losses. volatility. I mean, if you've got half a brain, and I've only got a quarter of a brain, which is why I hardly use stop <laughs> losses. But if you've got half a brain, you, you you'd probably use stop losses more often than not. You should. Yes, yes. And look, it's happened to me. I put them too. I always put them too close because I'm too risk averse. And I well, used to be taken out. Maybe that's why you've still got money, George. Yes. <laughs> now, one of your questions was, you know, how often do you watch your shares? Yeah. You only need to do two things. That's watch Alan Kohler on the ABC, 7.30, 7 o'clock news on the ABC. So this is ABC, ABC in, in Australia, just to be clear for those listening. Sorry, at yes, okay, sorry. Or well, the local news channel has a finance segment, usually about 10 minutes. And then that, it tells you what's happening that, <coughs> that day. And that gives you an overall picture. For instance, Alan Cole will come on and say, Commonwealth Bank, Bank dropped $4 today. And my yeah. wife says, oh, she's got Commonwealth Bank one. And he's, that's a lot, isn't it? No, he will say to you, ah, but it went ex-dividend today. It said all the shareholders who've got Commonwealth Bank have been have, going to share in a dividend of $4. And of course, today, the chair suddenly changes and says, now we're starting a new period. And now that dividend period has gone, we're starting a new one. So the chair dropped in value because everybody's got their $4. So the $4 isn't really a drop in the share, it's because the share has gone ex-dividend. So he explains those little things to you and you don't need to sort of watch the share all the time, all day. Okay, yeah, let's, go yeah, back. Yeah. let's go back to Commonwealth Bank because that's a lesson for all shareholders. You got that share for $5.40 in 1992 or something, right? It's now $100. That, that happens in one week in crypto. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It does sometimes. But... And, and, and the opposite as well, Rob. And the opposite. It goes from $85 to one cent sometimes in but 24 hours. The Commonwealth, the Commonwealth Bank share uh, has reduced the tax effective income direct to your bank account all that time. And the yeah. dividends increased from 20 cents to nearly $5 or $6 plus a tax credit you can use on your tax account. So shares in Australia provide you with an income. Not all the mining mm. shares do. Many mining shares, just, you know, you buy them, you know, they drill a hole, there's nothing in the hole, you lose your money. Okay. Yeah, Sometimes yeah. they drill a hole and it, they make, and they say, and, they, and, and the, the price goes up just because they've drilled a good hole. They don't actually have to mine any gold. All they have to do is say, we've struck gold. <laughs> Share goes up, you sell the dip gold. So that's a trading. Now, in the Australian Stock Exchange, that was the way to make money in shares. But that changed in the year 90, in the 90s and the 2000s. Every, most of the people now who have shares in Australia, the 700,000 people on Comsec, the reason they don't buy shares every day or every week is because they're happy to sit with their BHP, Commonwealth Bank, West Farmers, Commonwealth Serum Laboratories, because they're providing a tax effective income. And that yeah. pays their, and the, the, the people that didn't vote for Bill Shorten had a hundred or two hundred thousand dollars in the share, the share market that they had built up over time. And that was giving them an income of five or ten thousand dollars a year, which helped to pay their rates, water rates, insurance, tax the license, and so on and so on. And they had a tax refund at the end of the year. So, you know, when Bill Shorten tried to take that away, he didn't realize what he was doing. People just voted against it. And not just yeah, the old yeah, people. The old people said to their children, look, 
Bill Sean's going to take your money because this we yeah. were going to leave these shares to you and the internet yeah. got. And so they voted against it too. So many people were, you know, were, were cheesed off by the Labour government at that time for doing that. And this year they've said, we will never do anything to franking credits. Yeah, never. okay. <laughs> the same in property, property have said, we'll never do anything to negative gearing. Yeah. Why don't you should have someone on your show to do with property investing? I think that's a very good way yeah, of diversifying your income. Yep. One of, one of the things you were saying earlier, George, because you're talking about these companies, the BHPs and the Commonwealth Banks and the West Farmers, and for those who are listening to this over in another country or another part of the world, other than Australia, you can look those up, but they're very, very large top 100 companies uh, in Australia. And they would well, be classified... BHP is the top of minor in the world. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So, uh, But they would be classified... Uh, as blue chip shares. Um, yes. Yeah, I ones... guess worldwide, it's like Apple or Tesla shares or yes, yeah. uh, Amazon blue shares. Chip, you know? blue, blue, blue chip shares. So look, one, one of the things that you, I know one of your, your, your favourite uh, terms that you have said a lot over the years uh, that I'll repeat and then you can explain what that is when you're talking about dividends is what is a fully franked dividend, George? Okay. Fully frank dividend means that the company has paid tax on your behalf. This only came out in the 1990s. Before okay. then, if the company paid tax, you got a dividend, which was your income. Yep. The share of the tax paid, you didn't get. Yep. So this is one of the few, this is pertinent to Australia only. Lots yes. of people around the world wish they had this system. Mm. Okay. Okay. So let me take, a hundred thousand dollar share portfolio in several good Australian companies. You've got a hundred thousand dollars. You haven't found a hundred thousand dollars. You've built that up over time. Your yep. income should be what's a good percentage income on an investment? That's a good question for you. Five percent. I love that number, right? Uh, the banks at the moment are paying five percent, BHB is paying 11 percent, Woolworths is only paying three percent. Why would you buy Woolworths shares that are only paying 3% dividend? Because it's described in a site that I'll give you in a moment as a defensive stock. It's called a consumer defensive stock. It's, it's in a category in the Australian share market that they say, if you buy these shares, they'll provide some defense to your portfolio. What, do, what are the three things that people do? What in they regards eat. to shares? No, oh, what okay. do they do? <laughs> they eat, they eat, don't they? Yeah. yeah. And in Australia, they drink, they drink alcohol. Yeah, and yeah. The next one is the last most important one sleep. They gamble. <laughs> they, they gamble. gamble. Oh. Right? Okay. So those are okay. called defensive stocks because whatever happens in a pandemic, <laughs> uh, global meltdown, and everything, people still eat. They, yeah. still, they still drink they and still they, drink. they actually gamble more. Yeah, they drink they and gamble, gamble more, more. Trying to win more to, to yeah. buy more cartons so of these alcohol. Are stocks, these are stocks. These one of yeah. these. So you would have all of these stocks in your portfolio, but you would have one of them in there because, against diversification, you'd have a share that's not all. You wouldn't have all banks, all miners. You'd have a Woolworths because people always eat. You're not going to get yeah. the return on that, but it's the, at the end of the day, if you lose all your money, you lose all your money except Woolworths because people will still eat. So if yeah, you had a $100,000 yeah. share portfolio, you would get almost a 5% yield, which is a $5,000 in dividends. Now, I'm going to just round these numbers off. Along with that $5,000 in dividends, sorry, you would get tax credits of around $2,500 allocated to you. The two thousand, okay. sorry, the five thousand dollars would go directly to your bank from the company. But the two thousand dollar five, two thousand five hundred dollar franking credit will be notion will be given to you on paper. And at the end of the year, you would be able to claim that back from the tax office used to pay your tax. Now there was a change in Australia. Guys, it was a wonderful day. They said, if you don't pay tax, you won't be able to use the tax credit. So you know what we're going to do? We're going to give you a cash refund. 
Oh. So my wife doesn't work. She has a good, well, she has a good income from her shares. She spends the money, and at the end of the tax year, she gets a cash refund of about seven or eight thousand dollars. Okay, because she's she doesn't she's not due to pay any tax, but the tax has been paid by the company. Her share of that payment is hers to use, so she'll have a cash refund. And that's what Bill Shorten tried to stop. And I don't know if that's yeah, explained wow. Frankie credits. If that's um, got the appetite going for some people. Now, that is not the case for overseas, by the way. Okay. Yeah, yeah okay. <clears throat> so we're, we're in the lucky we're, country. <laughs> we're in the lucky country for sure. Yeah. For sure. So someone's, um, they've, one of the questions Rob has, so you, you've got these shares and some of them, may be more speculative they may not yes. be investing in in blue chip shares they want to take yeah. a higher risk profile yeah. um so the more the more volatile the more money can be made or lost of course yeah so um sort of time frames if someone buys something that is uh like a a, a well we'll classify it as a, as a penny stock so a, a share that is exceptionally cheap to buy um so it has a lot of potential upside Things, things like that, if someone buys a, a cheap share with potentially lots of upside, how does one manage and watch that and how long should you hold it for, uh, theoretically, educationally? Yeah, just wait until it hits your stop loss. Yes. And then you lose all your money. Yeah. You could do that. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I used to think if you're trading in shares, if you're trading in shares, you expected it to go up within two or three days. Right. If you, yeah. if you were if you were trading, you yeah. say, I expect you should you should have a reason for that. Mm. Yeah, yeah. You yep. should have some data. Yeah, yeah. Yes. I love to say hope is not, not a brother, plan, right? And not your hope is you know, some reliable data that says a stockbroker would say, Hey, look, there's gonna be some good. This was oh look, this was always good. When I worked in a stockbroking firm, they would say in the morning, there's going to be some good news coming about this stock today. Say, now this is a good chance to sell. Okay, yeah. There's some good news coming about this stock today. You've got the share. There's going to be a lot of people wanting to buy it. And if a lot of people want to buy it, it's going to put the price up. Yeah. So yeah. that's when to sell, isn't it? Of course. Like, of course. So, you know, but usually I think with most of the trades, it was about three days. If it hadn't gone up in three days, forget it, it's not going to happen. Okay. Oh. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Now, that's, but, but so you would but, say there's no other uh, examples of that that it's not the case? That, uh, look, it could well, be I think, six I months think, or a year? I think, you know, no, I think if you are, if you're looking to trade, I don't, I just don't understand why you're not using technical analysis. Because if a share is trending up, We've just had a pandemic, haven't we? One yeah. of the things they talked about was the moving average. Remember that? They said, mm -hmm. you know, there's 5,000 cases, then there's 6,000, and then there's 7,000, and then there's 5,000. Oh, it's gone below the moving average. Yeah, that is a yeah. sign that things are getting all right. Now, in our cases, that's a sign that it's going to change. If it's going up, the moving average will be lower than the share sorry lower than the share and then suddenly the share will cross down below the moving average so that will mean to sell that's a selling indication now that's a very yeah, okay. very simple one and yeah. if you go on a lot of transit sites they can you can actually trip a chart a moving average very easily i can more draw a moving average for you on a chart without the without the mathematical thing it's so easy to do so they talked about that in the pandemic a great thing. And so scientists use it. This is to um, indicate a trend. When the trend, the trend is moving upwards, when is it changing? When the moving average goes down. Now, let me tell you something here. You're always too late. <laughs> but hopefully you're not <laughs> yeah. really, really too late. If you're a few seconds late, that's all right. But, you know, you don't want to be one minute too late, do you? Yeah, okay. Now, that's for the share that's trending upwards. So if it's trending upwards, you say, when's it going to change around? Well, when the moving, when it crosses below the moving average. Now, some shares don't do that. They do this, up, down, up, down, up, down. Now, here's a good idea. 
buy, sell, buy, sell, <laughs> buy, sell. Now, I'm not greedy. I'm going to draw two lines up here. There's a line. See it? And there's a line at the top. Can you imagine those two lines? Now, here's the go. Buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell. So I didn't wait till you went to the top and the bottom. I yeah. waited till you didn't touch those two lines. Now, you yep. would get those from a something called the Relative Strength Index or the Stochastic Indicator. So a share that is oscillating, you need an oscillating indicator to tell you when to buy shit. Hmm. So a, a lot of traders use, a lot of traders use technical analysis. Yeah, yeah. So you're not trying to pick the top, you're not trying to pick the bottom, but you're sitting somewhere in the middle. So yeah. you're sort of, you're averaging uh, your there, loss there or your gain. Of, there are lots of phrases on the stock market. I'll give yeah. you one here. Don't catch falling knives. You heard of that one? Yeah. Right. yeah that's... <laughs> it was in the paper. It was in the paper yesterday. And the other yeah. one is we've just had a bit of a, the share market's gone down and people think it's bounced off. And what has he done? It's bounced like a dead cat. Yeah, dead cat bounce. So that's yeah, called a dead yeah. cat bounce. This is yeah. a rather rude, this is a rather rude uh, uh, quote, <laughs> and I apologize for it. It's it's a Chinese head owners. Yeah. Bot bottom picker get dirty finger. Uh. Bottom picker get dirty finger. If you're trying to get the bottom <laughs> of the share market or your particular Bitcoin, uh. all you're getting is a dirty finger. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's, that's that. gross, George. That's gross. That one. There's another one in shares and, and everything else is shares take the stairs on the way up and yep. the elevator on the way down. On the way down. Crypto. Yeah, yeah. Crypto. Really, really good one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Crypto I'm take the stairs on the cryptocurrency. You know, now, that tells me one thing. If you want to make money, you short stocks. Shorting is the way to make money, isn't it? Yeah, oh, okay, because no. it's slowly <laughs> stepping up, but you're, you're rocketing down. Yeah, but it always, it always happens very quickly. Yeah. Things, yeah. It's very difficult to pick going on the way up, but when it comes down, it comes down rapidly, and that's where you make your more money. People who short stocks make more money than people who go, as we can, go long. If you're expecting the share to go up, it takes a long time. You're going long on it. If you're going short, it's going to be a very short time, it comes down. Now you can you can't trade short stocks on Comsec, but there are other avenues to trade short stocks. So you can can you short your cryptocurrency? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, I'm really, I I'm not, I, yeah, I've never I, I've heard that's quite uh, as a different level of trading. Um, well, I always think what I've just said to you there: stairs on the way up, elevator on the way down. It's all quicker, easier to see. Bang. You've yeah, got to, I get you. Yeah. yeah, you've got to have you've got to have your stop loss there. What yeah, your stop okay. loss on the short? Yes, you must. So if it keeps going up, pull out. Don't short yes, anymore. Because here we are. If you when you when you trade, let's talk about shares. If you buy a share, the most you can lose if you go long, that means you're expecting it to go up. You buy the share, the most you can lose is the amount of share. Yeah. But yep. if you sell it short on the stock market, you say, I'm going to sell that stock. You don't have to have it, by the way. You can always find it another way. So you can sell the stock, although you don't have it. But what about if it goes up 500 times? You're yeah. going to have to owe that money. So it can yes. bankrupt you. You know, yes. you can lose more than the price of the share. That's what I'm saying. Now, what they call me, if you, when you go short, the ideal thing is to have the stock as well. So you have the physical shares and you go short. And if you don't have the physical share, shares, it's called going naked. Yeah, In other yeah, words, yeah. You're gonna lose all your clothes. You well, they're, yeah, they're naked. all leveraged. Well, this yeah. is this is and the problem that's happened in crypto. So going, but going short is a very popular way to make money quicker, easy. I always think it's easy because it does go down suddenly. Once it starts going, yeah, yeah. This is what's happened in crypto, George. Yes, uh, I know. a lot of a lot of people <laughs> have think. over leveraged by, and, and this is the problem. A lot of the companies let them do this. They'll they'll leverage five, ten, twenty x on a on a cryptocurrency, so they just get completely and utterly obliterated when it doesn't go the way that they're thinking it's going to go. 
Um, so, uh, yeah, I've never wanted to play you know, that game personally. On a, lot of, on a lot of these platforms, they allow you to 100, 100x. Yes, I'm sure. Yes, I've done that. I've gone to 100 on currency. Wow. Currency, 1% margin. Yeah, that's scary. Now you stop losses, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Well, you have to, yeah, you, yeah. You, because you you open an account for a thousand dollars with a company, and you think all I can lose is my thousand dollars. No, yeah. no. When you sign it, you say if if the pro if your stop doesn't work, if it moves so fast that your stop doesn't work, it can take you into unknown territory, and you can lose more than your money you put in. You can go bankrupt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Interesting. So we've we've touched on we, we've touched on some some sort of more advanced stuff here. Yeah, yeah. And because we're sort of trying to keep it in in more of the beginner stuff, it was good to go into those spaces to give people an idea. But ultimately, if someone's listening to this and they're wanting to get into this for the first time, uh, one of the things that we've talked about is sticking with blue chip stocks and using a simple yes. platform like Comsec or whatever is the equivalent yes. in another part of the world. That does that basically doesn't isn't high risk profile. Um, obviously, your you returns are more than likely going to be less because it's not as volatile. But it's a good way to experiment. What what do you suggest, George, with people who want to do some trading without actually putting in any of their own money, just to do uh, not fake trades? What's practice. the word for it? Just practice, practice. trades. You know. Um, well, you go on to. Daniel, there are platforms there that are mm -hmm. called Contracts for Difference, CFDs. And you can okay. go on there and you can, they will give you a dummy account to trade. Okay. Do you have dummy accounts on the crypto? Probably. Um, no. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> well, well, no, I, we don't, but I use something like there's platforms we use to monitor our shares. One called, one's called uh, CoinGecko. And I set up dummy trades in that. Oh, right, so I'll, right. so I'll okay. say, okay, I'm going to go and buy these 10 different cryptocurrencies. I'll put X amount in and it's going to track it as if I do own them, but I don't actually have, I haven't put any money into yeah, the yes. actual crypto. Well, so you could probably, I'm sure you'd be able to do that with shares. You'd be able to set up a uh, dummy share trading account. The ASX have a share market game that they yeah. have every year or year. And you can actually join the game doesn't cost anything, and you're given a fictitious portfolio, 50,000, I think they give you, and you've got uh, several months to trade that portfolio, and there's a, a large prize at the end of it. So yeah, Lois was, in, was involved with the very yes. first one of those back in the, in the mid-90s when she worked for the ASX, Lois, my wife, George's daughter. Um, right. And they used to have to send and discs the used to across the countries. They used to have to send all these copy discs out. The internet was only really just starting, so it and wasn't all online. So that was, that. yeah. But unfortunately, it gave the children the idea that the way you made money out of stocks and shares was by buying and selling, which I think I started at the beginning. Is that is not the only way. Seventy percent of the people on Comsec have quite significant portfolios of shares that they've built over the long term by reinvesting their dividends they get, finding other mother money, buying shares that go up over time, putting the tax return, you know, the tax savings, the tax refunds they get, putting that back into the portfolio. Suddenly you turn up with a large, it's a bit like superannuation. Your superannuation is in what? Shares. Yeah, yeah. How come, yeah. How come one day, you know, you start, work at 21 you haven't got any money and see when you're 60 years old you've got a half a million dollars because the superannuation company bought shares for you yeah they put them in there and they just built them up over time now you yeah, don't i'm sure years. they built it such a safe way i mean yes. maybe Too safe. instead of using a generic super company you could kind of control your own shares with self-managed super you know yes of course well done rob that's the way to go and a lot of people do that now. They might have, of course, we have to have super because it's compulsory. You should always have your own little um, share portfolio because it's a very useful thing to have. If you've got $50,000 in a share portfolio and you want to buy a new car, you can find it. 
as opposed to, let's put a negative about property while we're at it. With a property, if you buy an investment property, you can't sell a spare bedroom for cash. Yeah, good point. Yeah. But with shares, it's smaller and it's, it's, it's more easily manipulated. It's on the liquid. Other hand, yeah, on the it's other liquid. Hand, if you've got shares in Coles, you can't go to the local manager and say, excuse me, I've got nowhere to leave. Can I bump down in the storeroom? So no, no, no. Would, because an investment property, you can always go and live in it if you want to at some time. So there's a couple of quotes for your listeners today. No, that's good. That's good. Um, so um, we're, we're heading to the top of the hour now, okay. uh, gentlemen. Um, so, Rob, uh, any finishing up questions before we we'll, uh, get to the end of this introduction into shares? I think it's been good talking about um, the traditional share market and then just every now and then uh, correlating it to, to crypto. And I guess yeah. the moral of this story that I'm getting is um, diversification. Like people yeah. should be joining up to Comsec and putting, you know, some of their portfolio into the traditional blue chip safe stuff. And, and then if they want to, if they want to, you know, have a, have a crack at some fast money, maybe only putting in a small amount into some crypto and then maybe in, um, maybe doing technical analysis over at the share market. If people go and look at that, it's going to help them do technical analysis over in the crypto market. Yeah. Right. I, I, my parting gift is a, a site for you to go on. It's free. Marketindex.com.au. Marketindex.com.au. I use that. Yep. So just go on there. It gives you valuable information about all the companies. Sometimes you don't, need, you don't even have the code of the company. So if you type in Woolworths, it will tell you W O W. That's the code. You go yep, in there, yeah, yeah. and then you find that it'll tell you it's a consumer defensive stock. A bit down on the right hand side, it'll give you broker recommendations. It will say ten brokers say this is a buy, one broker says it's a hold, four brokers say sell it. So you're getting some background on there. It's also got a very basic charting package on it it's live it's interactive you can put in the moving average on there and you can find it some base. you say you say i'm going to buy this share it's a good share should i buy it today have a look at the moving average you might say well i know i think it's, it's done big below the moving average i'll wait a few days see if it turns around so that's a very good website excellent it tells you the upcoming dividends it tells you the historical dividends Everything. Yeah. Great okay. Stuff. Cool. Great stuff. That's, that's marketindex.com.au. Yeah. 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 Cool. I'm looking. I'm looking at it now. Yeah. Fantastic. Me too. It looks pretty good. Yeah. 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 So, it's so look, free, um, because, free because there's some advertising on it. Obviously. But yeah. Yeah. No, that's that's fair. That's fair enough. So that's all good. All right. Well, look. I think um, this has been fantastic. Thank you, George. This so there's a well, lot I've, of people. Uh, I enjoyed that chat on. Uh, uh, on the technical analysis side of things, I don't usually get to speak about that, so it was good. No worries. So, so if you yeah, if you're thinking of getting into the share market, um, there's some easy ways to do it. As George says, you can just you know, and we're not sponsored by Comsec, just to be aware. Uh, you, you know, you can go and open up a trading platform anywhere, but Comsec is one of the easy ones. It's, it's been voted the them. most easy, user friendly, and people yeah, yeah, I've yeah. Met which is important if you. Years old, a lady's eighty years old using it. Yeah, so that's important if you're just getting into it for the first time. Ease of use uh, and reducing those barriers to entry is, is great. Yeah. So go on um, and have a look at it. Uh, again, this is not financial advice. Do your own research. Speak to a yeah. financial advisor. Uh, thanks. Be nice to meet you, Rob. Be nice you to meet too, you George. Back. Thanks so much but, for coming on the show today. Yeah, thanks to everyone for tuning in. And uh, again, we always like to ask you if you're watching this on YouTube. Uh, please go and hit the subscribe button if you feel it's worthwhile to subscribe to. Um, also like the episode. Uh, but we thank you for your time and uh, we'll see you on the next episode. Thanks, George. Thanks, Rob. Thanks, yeah, man. Thanks guys. Bye, Thanks, bye, bye for now.